Please stand if you can. Our invocation will be delivered at this time by Reverend David Howe. Uh, he served the police department for over 39 years. Reverend Howe, please come up and deliver this. Thank you, Chief. Today we have come together for a great occasion that will never be forgotten, especially for those that are being sworn in this afternoon. I have a couple of comments that I would like to make to each of you, and that is that you stand here today having chosen a profession, or as one person one time said, it chooses you. Your profession that you have chosen is ordained of God, endorsed in the scripture, in Romans chapter 13. People that break the law, you've, you're a threat to them, the Bible says. But to those that obey the law, you're not a threat. And so thank you for choosing to serve us this day. Our Heavenly Father, we ask today that you would touch each of us as we have gathered here together. Thank you for these men and women that serve us, Lord, not just those that are being sworn in today, but every one, Lord, from dispatch to administration. Lord, we thank you for each of them, and Lord, that you would bless them, bless their families, Lord, today we pray, and may they serve us, Lord, with integrity, not just before us, but before you, and we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. remain standing. Thank you very much. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Detective Dave Glazier, could you lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask you to remain silent for a moment of silence, please. Take a moment of silence for those of our brother and sister's offices who we have lost in our past throughout this year in New Hampshire and across our nation. Thank you. Remain seated. Good afternoon, and thank you, gathered friends and family fellow employees for attending the Hudson Police Awards and swearing in ceremony. I am Chief Tad Dione. It is once again my honor to preside over our function today. During the course of the ceremony, we will be staring in Jesse Dutile, Sherry Hughes, Alexander Haran, and Michael Patterson as Hudson Police Officers. We will be recognizing several employees with awards and we'll be celebrating the promotion of Rob McNally to Sergeant. This time I would respectfully request that all of you in the room who have served in any branch of the armed forces of our great country to please rise up and if you cannot raise your hand and allow us to recognize you for your devotion, commitment and sacrifices to keeping our nation safe. Thank you. Thank you for your service. I'd like to recognize Hudson Board of Selectmen members. Uh, board Chair Police Liaison Bob Gesford could not make it today, but he extended his well, his well wishes to all those who are being honored. I'd like to recognize Dylan Dumont, our Vice Chair. Uh, he will administer the oath of police officer and sergeant today. I'd also like to thank Dave Morin. Dave's here, a uh, great supporter of the Hudson Police Department as well. Uh, Kara Roy and Heidi Jacoby uh, will also continue to give us support. We are very thankful for a very, very gracious board. I'd also like to recognize in the room, I believe is the acting uh, town administrator, Steve Malaysia. Thanks, Steve. Um, Steve doesn't miss many of these, and uh, it's always great to see him here. I'd also like to thank any of our other department heads who had a chance to make it. Uh, we get so much support from all the departments uh, throughout the town, uh, especially the fire and, and, and DPW uh, rec for providing us a nice place to put this here. I also want to thank um, HCTV, uh, for the, their staff is fantastic. Um, Mike Johnson, uh, also uh, Mike Pylon, and, and uh, Brendan as well. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank our many friends, formerly of HPD, who've retired or moved on, 
to other agencies and career fields. Our past, family, our past employees continue to remain a big part of our HBD family. I'd like to introduce our command staff. Captain Dave Kao, Special Operations, uh, excuse me, Special Investigations Bureau. Captain Steve McElhaney, Administrative Bureau. Captain Pat McStravick, Operation Bureau. Reverend Howe, who you've met already. Uh, Lieutenant Roger Lamash, Accreditation Manager. Uh, I have uh, Nicole Clay, our Prosecutor, Attorney Clay. And uh, Derek Lloyd, Overnight Shift Commander. And our Day Shift Commander, Kevin Riley. Also, Patrick Broderick, who's a Lieutenant, our our uh, evening shift commander could not be here today, and Jana McMillan, who is our uh, animal control supervisor. I'd like to uh, thank my executive uh, secretary, my coordinator, Sherry Kimball. She keeps me on track and helps me put together this type of an event. And I'd like to thank Sergeant Marcotte and Mass Patrol Officer Ron Cludia, as always, for setting up and getting everything done logistically here. Could Jesse uh, Dutile, Sherry Hughes, Alex Saran, and Mike Patterson please approach, stand here. These four officers standing before you have heard the call to our noble profession. Now more than ever before, we need Americans amongst us who are still willing to stand the line for law and order, to protect our most vulnerable, and to keep our neighborhood safe. You four officers are not alone. You're surrounded by others in blue who think just like you. And for answering the calling today in this political climate, I want to thank you. You begin with us in your career when just a few years ago, politicians supported defunding the police and others stood by and said nothing. Leaders across the nation jumped on a wave of police reform, including here in our state, 1,000 miles away from the epicenter. Mass media more or less condemned the police in a ridiculous narrative, not supported by truth. The narrative was about race and violence, but you will help us correct that narrative. You will see without color, You'll show compassion for all, and you'll restore trust. You begin your career, the Hudson Police Department, during an ongoing opiate epidemic, also at a time when methamphetamine is more readily available than ever and with evil purity. And during this epidemic, you will likely have to navigate through all the problems that come with legislators continually considering the legalization of cannabis. But with all these challenges, it's no wonder there are no large pools of applicants anymore. Yet here you are, offering us great hope for the future. We are headed in the right direction, and you are working for a great and supportive community. As you start here with us, you are armed, with all the, you are armed against all the rhetoric, not with a firearm or a taser, not with pepper spray, but with your integrity. The integrity you possess as you entered and all the training you have received will carry the day. Your integrity is the most important characteristic. You must never diminish your integrity. It will shield you in unfortunate times where you must respond to aggression and violence with force. It will shield you when you take law enforcement action and will protect your reputation as you are in court and you testify. No matter what, stay the course of righteousness. Never give up. Never give up and you never give up. That's the model for you, your brothers and sisters on the job, and your family. And to all the families out here, my staff and I want to assure you that your loved ones are working for an exceptional department which values its employees and provides the best training. The Hudson Police Department has a wonderful culture built by many over a few decades with foundations in family values protecting those in needs in partnership with our community. Officers, I am in the winter of my career, but you are in the spring. My challenge to you is to write the new narrative. Let the people understand what you really encounter on the street and how well you do your job in the face of so much adversity. Your honorable actions and your unwavering compassion will swell our ranks with candidates willing to hold the line. That's your challenge. Matthew said, blessed are the peacekeepers, for they shall be called the children of God. I believe this to be true. It's also been said, and I'll paraphrase this one, that people sleep comfortably at night because tough souls like you are ready to blunt criminal acts of violence and other nefarious behavior. So I wholeheartedly welcome you. 
Let me give you a brief description of the offices up here. Jesse uh, Dutile grew up in Groton, Massachusetts with his two siblings, where he was raised by his parents, Kevin and Jennifer. He loved playing team sports and excelled at baseball. Jesse was the captain of both his high school and college baseball teams, enjoyed the competition and the camaraderie. Jesse is a 2023 graduate of the Fitchburg State College, uh, having earned his bachelor's degree in business administration. Jesse also obtained an associate's degree in biz business from Middlesex Community College in 2020. Jesse worked for North Point Construction Management, who we stole him from, <clears throat> in uh, Hudson, New Hampshire, when he applied for HPD. Uh, he gradu he's a graduate of the 196 New Hampshire Police Academy, 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 excuse me, and he currently resides in Derry, New Hampshire. Pinning his badge will be his father, Kevin. Officer Sherry Hughes. Officer Hughes was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts, and later worked for the MBTA for 27 years before retiring. Officer Hughes had worked for us as a telecommunications technician uh, when she was hired in 2023 until she became a police officer this spring. Officer Hughes was an excellent employee as, as dispatcher, and I'm pretty confident she's going to be the same as a police officer. She's graduated the 197th police, New Hampshire Police Academy. She's currently in the field training evaluation program, and she will be assigned to the patrol division immediately following her success, successful completion. Officer Hughes resides in Hudson, New Hampshire. She enjoys spending time with her mother, Eileen, and her daughter. Pinning her badge will be her daughter, Mackenzie. Officer Alex Horan. Officer Horan was born in Orlando, Florida, grew up in Fairfax, Virginia, with, with his brother and parents. He attended St. Anselm College, where he completed his bachelor's degree and recently his master's degree, both in criminal justice. Officer Horan volunteered as St. Anselm College assistant cross-country coach, and he previously was employed at Southern New Hampshire Medical Center. He began his career with us this spring as well, and he's also a graduate of the 197th New Hampshire Police Academy. He's currently in the training, field training evaluation program as well, and he will be assigned to patrol division as soon as he successfully completes the program. He resides in Gofftown, New Hampshire. Pinning Officer Rand's badge will be his parents, Tom and Kate. Officer Michael Patterson. Officer Patterson was born in Winchester, Mass. He grew up in Dracut, Massachusetts, and later attended Merrimack College, earning a master's degree in criminology and criminal justice in 2023. Michael was previously employed by the Salem, New Hampshire Police Department as a full-time certified police officer after graduating the 196th New Hampshire Police Academy. He enjoys spending time with his girlfriend, Emily, and resides in Dracut, Mass with his father. Pinning his badge will be his father, also Michael Patterson. Could those of you who are pinning the badges please come up and stand with your family member? Selectman Dylan Dumont will now administer the oath of police officer. I state your name. I'm sorry, raise your right hand. That that's scripted, that's not on the script. You, you <laughs> threw me for a loop there. I state your name. I, Jesse Dutile. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform all the duties. Discharge and perform all the duties. Incumbent on me as a police officer. Incumbent on me as a police officer. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to enforce. Agreeably to enforce. All laws of the state of New Hampshire. All laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the ordinance of the municipality. And the ordinance of the municipality. Fairly and impartially. Fairly and impartially. And in addition. And in addition. To defend and uphold the. To defend and uphold the. Constitutions of the United States. Constitutions of the United States. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Family members, you can pin your badge on your loved one now. <clears throat> Congratulations. <laughs> the oath is a mouthful. It's a lot. I had to screw something up. <laughs> I want to say thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you.
Thank you. Having trouble over there, Michael? <laughs> now the pressure's really on. <laughs> You can have a seat. Thank you. Congratulations again. I just, I quickly want to mention a couple of uh, recent civilian hirings we have done. I think it's important to say, um, as we celebrate here, some of our sworn officers. Uh, Stephanie Sabetti was our legal clerk part time. Um, we had recently hired her as a full time records clerk. Uh, Sarah Chapin is part-time. We recently hired her as a part-time legal clerk to take Stephanie's position. And Alex Jerry, we recently hired as a full-time telecommunications technician. Our civilian employees are so vital in supporting our sworn staff. We are very grateful that we were able to fill these positions with such qualified people. Now I'm going to move on to our promotion today. The promotion is to sergeant. Um, I think it's important to mention we have some, just some excellent employees all around and many deserve recognition and many go unsung. Uh, because we have such dedicated offices, any, any promotion we have uh, requires difficult decisions and this is a really good problem to have, but it's well deserved uh, if you reach the, the mark of Sergeant. So, uh, Sergeant McNally, why don't you come up? Sergeant McNally began his law enforcement career with the Hudson Police Department on August, I'm sorry, on April 2nd, 2017. And I will say he's a legacy. His mother worked for us and retired with us too. Um, he graduated from the 173rd New Hampshire Police Academy on August 18th, 2017. Prior to that, Sergeant McNally graduated from Albert High School, went on to attend two trade schools where he was a certified on heavy equipment operations that obtained a Class A CDL. Sergeant McNally served in the Uniform Patrol Division from 2017 to 2023. During that time, he became a member of our MONI unit. He became a certified field training officer, a driving instructor, a motorcycle instructor, and a firearms instructor. Sergeant McNally has also been a member of the Southern New Hampshire Special Operations Unit since 2020, and he currently serves the role of assistant team leader. Sergeant McNally was promoted to Special Investigations Bureau in August of 2023. He was assigned to the Narcotics Division until his promotion this year. He resides in Hudson with his wife, Alex, and their two daughters, Tegan and Kennedy. Painting his badge will be his wife, Alex. Why don't you come up? We're going to have everybody come up, too. I love it. Thank you. Selectman Dumont will now administrate the oath of sergeant. Selectman Dumont. Raise your right. <laughs> and I state your name. I, Robert McNally. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me as sergeant. Incumbent on me as sergeant. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to enforce. Agreeably to enforce all the laws of the state of New Hampshire. All the laws of the state of New Hampshire and the ordinances of the municipality and the ordinances of the municipality fairly and impartially fairly and impartially and in addition and in addition to defend and uphold to defend and uphold the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the United States and the state of New Hampshire and the state of New Hampshire so help me God so help me God you can pin that badge on him now <clears throat> Congratulations, Rob. <laughs> Thank you. We'll move on to our award ceremony now. I think I, I mentioned this already that a lot of our offices do great things all year, all year round. It's not recognized. We miss it, and other things, and they become unsung. 
unsung heroes. Um, <clears throat> many, many officers conduct themselves with merit, merit and honor every day. Unfortunately, this goes unnoticed at times. However, we do try to recognize officers as we can for exemplary performance or great accomplishments. Captain McElhinney, can you please approach? <clears throat> I have three Chiefs Achievement Awards. Um, so I'm going to describe, and I'm, we have two today to give out. One uh, was um, John Mirabella was uh, to receive a Chiefs Achievement Award for uh, his eight years of dedication in volunteering for Camp Fatima, which helps um, challenged adults and challenged children uh, get to a camp and go camping and do all kinds of outdoor activities. So John couldn't be with us today. But I'm going to read the description of the Chiefs Achievement Award and I'm going to go through the two that are here to get it. Captain McElhinney will be the first recipient. The Chief's Achievement Award is given to employees for highly professional conduct or behavior, which brings great credit upon themselves in the Hudson Police Department. Consideration may include consistent outstanding enforcement or other police activity, outstanding community service or policing project, or completion of a comp complex assignment or project, which brings great credit upon the department. And Captain McElhaney began his law enforcement career with the Hudson Police Department July 29, 2007. He graduated from the New Hampshire 144th Police Academy. He holds a bachelor's degree in history from Norwich University and a master's degree in public administration from the University of New Haven. Through the years, Captain McElhaney has held a number of assignments and positions to include patrol officer, detective, cop unit member in the Criminal Investigations Division tactical member of the Southern New Hampshire Operations Unit. He was also a certified field training officer. In August of 2017, he was promoted to sergeant, and then in November 4th of 2019, he was promoted to lieutenant and became our information and accreditation manager. <clears throat> On January 10th, uh, 2023, Steve was promoted by captain and took command of the Administration Bureau. Previously, he has received a life-saving accommodation award on three occasions, and he's also been a recipient of the Chief's Achievement Award on two other occasions. Captain McElhaney resides in Londonderry, New Hampshire, with his wife, Lindsay, and their two children, McKenna and Grayson. In April of 2023, Captain McElhaney had applied for the FBI National Academy. In order to be accepted, Captain McElhaney would have to show proven records as professional within our organization. On average, Officers selected have about 21 years of law enforcement experience and return to the departments to serve on executive level positions. If one can get selected, as you may guess, it's a credible opportunity that is beneficial to both the officer and the agency. The FBI Academy instructors, special agents, and other staff with advanced degrees provide the training. Many instructors are recognized international, internationally for their fields. Since 1972, the National Academy students have also been able to earn undergraduate and graduate credits from the University of Virginia, which credits many of the courses that are offered. Over 55,000 graduates have completed the FBI National Academy since it began in 1935. The National Academy is held at the FBI Training Academy in Quantico, the same facility where the FBI trains its special agents and its intelligence analysts. Incredibly, Captain McElhinney was selected to attend. And I say this because uh, Captain Kao had been selected two years earlier, and that, that is quite a privilege to have two people selected. So it wasn't because it was incredible that Captain McElhinney was actually selected. <laughs> Steve was originally uh, slated for 2025 enrollment, but that was moved up, and early of July this year, Captain McElhinney began his first classes in earnest. He completed 10 weeks of advanced communication, leadership, and fitness training. On September 12, 2024, Captain, Ma Captain Stephen McElhaney graduated as a member of the 291st session of the FBI National Academy. The graduation took place at National Academy in Quantico, Virginia. Captain McElhaney is the fourth Hudson police officer ever to complete this prestigious program, joining the late Chief Andrew Pollack in 1952, uh, retired Chief Richard Gendron in 1999, and Captain David Kao in 2022 nationally less than one percent of the officers have the opportunity to attend such a program the 291st the 291st session consisted of 254 law enforcement officers from 47 states and the district of columbia class included law enforcement agents from 26 countries seven military organizations and several uh seven federal uh, uh civilian organizations 
Captain McElhaney, it is with great thanks and appreciation for all your highly professional conduct and be completed 10 intense weeks of training, graduated the FBI National Academy. I bestow upon you the Chief's Achievement Award. Congratulations. Captain McStravick, please. <clears throat> Captain McStravick stands before me for the Chief's Achievement Award as well. Captain McStravick began his law enforcement career with the Hudson Police Department July 30th, 2006, and soon graduated from the 141st New Hampshire Police Academy. He holds a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Granite State College. Captain McStravick was promoted to the rank of Sergeant July 1st, 2019. And at that time, he was supervising the Criminal Investigations Division and was tasked with overseeing Narcotics Unit, Task Force Detectives, and all felony level criminal investigations. In July of 2021, he was promoted to Lieutenant and became Shift Commander in the Patrol Division. And on the 1st of 20, May 1st of 2023, Pat was promoted to Captain and took command of the Operations Bureau. Throughout his career, Captain McStravick has spearheaded many community programs volunteering the Red Cross, the Blood Drives, um, Salvation Army, Toys for Tots, Fright Night, Police Explorers, and Special Olympics, just to name some. He has previously commanded the Crime Scene Unit and currently commands the Honor Guard. He resides in Litchfield with his wife, Patience. So in 2010, as a patrol officer at the time, Pat became a member of the CHIPS Committee. The CHIPS stands for Children of Hudson Interacting with Police Services. It was, I believe, our very first community program at the Hudson Police Department. The, the Children of Hudson Interact with Police Service is a charitable organization dedicated to fostering improved relations between the Children of Hudson and the Hudson Police Department. The organization was founded in 1990, consistent of Hudson police officers, local businesses, and concerned Hudson citizens. It has endeavored to fund and produce programs which allow Hudson police to meet and socialize with Hudson's children and their parents. Clearly the most successful and notable event <clears throat> that the CHIPS organization has coordinated up until this time was the annual Fright Night. Fright Night was a Halloween-based party sponsored uh, by CHIPS and hosted by the Hudson Police Department and was freely open to all of Hudson's children. <clears throat> For many years, Fright Night had, had replaced or supplemented the traditional trick-or-treat trick uh, through the streets of Hudson. Some years, nearly 700 children and their parents attended the event right here at the rec center. The event was accomplished with the help of numerous local businesses, dozens of volunteers, and many of the Hudson police officers uh, with the Town of Hudson and the Hudson Recreation Department and funds from the CHIPS organization that were raised throughout the years. Fright Night was not the only event that CHIPS organized and played an active role in. While it is certainly the largest event the organization staged, CHIPS continued to engage in other activities and events that carry out the CHIPS organizational mission. Those events include such as Old Home Days, Field Days, National Night Out, uh, Softball and Little League Sponsorship, and other promotional activities <clears throat> in order to provide a recreational setting for Hudson police officers to socialize with Hudson youth. In 2016, Captain McStravick took over as the treasurer of the CHIPS Committee. Here he was tasked with budgeting and doling out CHIPS resources to ensure the success of the community outreach programs. CHIPS would, whenever possible sponsor a student's trip to Washington DC for instance with the Hudson Memorial School. CHIPS would also assist in some uh, Hudson recreation programs by providing ice cream or treats in the summer when possible. As previously mentioned the biggest part of the CHIPS outreach was always the Fright Night event. Here Captain McStravick along with other employees, rec staff and numerous community volunteers would hold its annual Halloween party. Children in Hudson would interact with the offices and enjoy a Halloween themed party with goodie bags, bounce houses, pizza, and a DJ at no cost at all to the families and the children. When COVID-19 hit in 2020, restrictions were placed on all activities. Captain McStravick with other volunteers successfully ran a large scale outdoor event called Fright Ride. This had many moving parts and Captain McStravick was assisted by the Hudson Speedway, Hudson Recreation, Hudson Fire, and other community members. The Hudson Police Department and CHIPS received enormous praise from inside and outside the community as Hudson was the only 
community that did not let COVID-19 stop interaction between the police and its youth. However, all good things must come to an end. <laughs> After 14 years of incredible service to our community, Captain McStravick has stepped down from this role with ships. Captain McStravick, it is with great thanks and appreciation for your highly professional conduct, leadership, and true spirit of volunteerism and community as you help guide trips for well over a decade and through a pandemic. I hereby bestow upon you the Chief's Achievement Award. Congratulations. <clears throat> the next award is the Distinguished Unit Action Award. Captain McElhaney, Sergeant Marcotte, Officer Cludia, please come up. <laughs> Officer Nate Glacky will also be receiving this award. However, he uh, could not be here. He's out of state in training. This award was recommended uh, for officers Cludia and Glowacki by Sergeant Marcotte. Um, it was bumped uh, to the larger group by me, and uh, it was also confirmed by the, the recognition committee, and I concur. The Distinguished Unit Action Award is given to employees for outstanding service, which resulted from teamwork as a unit rather than an individual effort. This can be awarded to both officers and civilians. Over the last year and one half, the Administrative Bureau, specifically the Support Service Division of the Bureau, has demonstrated exceptional effort as a team by leveraging each other's individual skill sets, creativity, and group energy to undertake a number of large-scale tasks and vital functions. Many of these tasks have been kicked down the roads for years, and in one case for decades. I'm going to offer just a few of the major tasks out of scores that were accomplished through their outstanding teamwork and service. First, although every employee, every employee, assisted logistically with our renovation and addition of the, of the uh, Hudson Police Facility from 2023 to 2024, services were the pr principal moving employees. They also assisted in cleanouts, cleanups, and restorations of the areas over the entire facility. The Hudson Police Firing Range. Our firing range has been needed much, much, much attention. It essentially it has 30 years of lead in it. Um, so this included resurfacing lanes, removal of decades of lead in the berms, and improvements to our classroom trailer on site. This division was instrumental as a unit with the incredible renovation of our firing range. This included facilitating relationships that ended up with the repaving of the surface of the uh, facility. It was removal of and recycle of 13,900 pounds of lead via a grant that they secured, restoration of the berms once the lead was removed, painting of the classroom trailer, recycling of furniture during the police renovation into the classroom area, recycling of LED light poles to illuminate the facility for night shooting. Their efforts have literally made this the best outdoor firing range in New Hampshire law enforcement. And I'll also discuss one more, but it's not the last. There, there are many, many more. Uh, this is the clean out and rearranging of the mezzanine at our facility. During the expansion project, and renovation that took place from 2023 to 2024, we were constantly looking for areas to store our furniture, our assets, as the rooms were being renovated or built or actually reconstructed. We quickly realized the me mezzanine was not an option for us. It literally had 27 years of stored items and files. We utilized other space and promised ourselves it would be a future project that had to be done because it was an enormous task. This summer and fall, Sergeant Marquette spearheaded the cleanup and the cleanout project with his team, and that focused on what was required to be kept, what had value, what had no use at all, and what could be discarded. Not only did the unit handle the above in a three-pronged approach, they also rearranged and reorganized the entire uh, mezzanine, creating a, an enormous amount of volume, extra storage space that we need for the long term. These massive undertakings, which I described, 
while seamlessly handling the vital functions such as fleet maintenance, all employee training, police officer mandatory training, recruitment, facility management, and community events, demonstrates an outstanding service and a show of incredible commitment to teamwork to this end. Captain McElhaney, Sergeant Marcotte, Officer Cludia, it was a great thanks and appreciation for your extraordinary outstanding service in a team effort that I bestow upon you, the Distinguished Unit Action Award. Congratulations. So I again wish to uh, congratulate all of our employees sworn in his offices today, Rob McNally promoted, and those awarded. <clears throat> I especially wish to thank our friends and our family, past HPD employees, whether you're in attendance or not, who continue to support our offices, our dispatches, and our other civilian employees. Working within the law enforcement environment is extraordinary, extraordinarily complex, demanding, and stressful, yet it's also incredibly rewarding. To all of you, your proven support of us is crucial and provides great comfort. I want to thank you all, and this concludes our ceremony. Uh, we have some light refreshments, and please, families, feel free to come up with the flags or by, any, by our backdrop and take some photographs with your loved ones. Thank you very much. <laughs>